identify the nine graphical user interface elements. We'll be looking at the Wireshark GTK version. Let's go directly over to Wireshark now. In order to show you all nine elements, I'll need to open up a trace file. I'll select the Open a Capture File button on the main toolbar, and I'm going to open up a trace file called tr-general.pcapng. In order to show you all nine elements, I'm also going to need to add one of the toolbars here. On the menu bar, I'll select View and Wireless Toolbar. Now let me draw squares around the nine elements. The first element is the title bar. Now the title bar may indicate the version of Wireshark that you're running, or you can add another title up to the title bar using the Preferences button on the main toolbar. Below the title bar, you will see the menu. In many instances in Wireshark, you won't need to use the menu because the item you're looking for will be available on the main toolbar, which sits directly underneath the menu. I would highly recommend that you become familiar with each of the items available to you on the main toolbar and use the main toolbar whenever possible. Below the main toolbar, by default, will be the display toolbar. This is the display filtering toolbar. This filter toolbar includes buttons, such as the filter button on the left hand side, the display filter area, the expression button that will help you build display filters step by step, as well as additional buttons dealing with clearing and applying display filters, and also a save button. The save button enables you to save whatever display filter you enter in this area as a filter expression button. Filter expression buttons go along the right hand side of the filter toolbar. Below the filter toolbar area, you will see the wireless toolbar. The wireless toolbar is disabled by default. If you want to enable the wireless toolbar, you can do that under the view menu item. The wireless toolbar works with the air PCAP adapters. Below this, we have the three viewing panes. The first pane is the packet list pane. The next pane is the packet details pane. And the last pane is the packet bytes pane. Each of these panes are linked together, and I'll demonstrate that in just a moment. The last of the nine elements is the status bar. The status bar includes the expert button, an annotation button, if your trace file is saved in PCAP NG format, information about the file or information about the capture process during a live capture. The status bar also indicates how many packets have been captured in the trace file or are contained in the trace file, and if a filter has been applied, how many packets match the display filter. If you've opened up an existing trace file, you'll also see the load time to open that trace file. At the far right hand side of the status bar, you'll find an indication of the profile in which you are currently working. Let me take you into the three panels and show you how they work together. The top panel is the packet list pane. In the packet list pane, when you select a packet, that packet is shown in the packet details pane. The packet details pane has the dissectors applied to that packet and allows us to look at each of the individual fields inside of that packet. If you select a specific field inside of the packet details pane, the packet bytes pane will highlight that field. Most people begin by concentrating on the packet list pane. We can resize columns in the packet list pane. We can also click on a column to sort low to high or high to low. 
In addition, we can add columns to the packet list pane. To add a column to the packet list pane, simply select the field that you're interested in in the packet details pane, then right mouse click and choose apply as column. We've just added a time to live column to our packet list pane. You can right mouse click on a column header to change the alignment. I'll change my time to live column alignment to left. In addition, you can temporarily hide columns by right mouse clicking on the column heading and choosing hide column. To bring back any hidden column, right mouse click on any column heading and go to displayed columns and select it off of the list. If you're not going to use a column for a while, you may want to consider right mouse clicking on the column heading and removing it. Since displaying column information does require Wireshark to use some extra processing power, consider keeping your columns to a minimum. Having 15 columns may not be a problem, but having 150 columns may. Oftentimes, people don't use the Packet Bytes pane very often. To remove the Packet Bytes pane from View, on the main menu, simply select View and click on Packet Bytes. To bring back the Packet Bytes pane, select View and click on Packet Bytes again. As you work in the Wireshark graphical user interface, Make a point of right mouse clicking wherever possible to see what functions are available to you. We will examine right mouse click functionality a little later in this course. Now you should be able to spot the nine graphical interface elements. Just don't forget that one of them needs to be turned on, the wireless toolbar, because it's off by default. If you want to return back to the original format, we can select View and uncheck Wireless Toolbar to remove it from View.